Why don't we play what happened today in the streak? Okay, let me get it. This happened. What happened today? Uh, we'll play it. This happened uh, today, 20 years ago. So they have Sweeney, Tucker, and Ordaz on the right side, and Perez playing at shortstop. And over now at third base is Alisea, and Miguel Tejada is up for the A's. And wouldn't this be fitting? And the MVP champ. One out, bases loaded. Two outfielders, Ibanez and Beltran playing shallow. Five infielders, one out, ninth inning in a 6-6 tie. Grimsley ready. He deals. And it's a line drive, base hit center field! Greg Myers scores from third! Tejada wins another ball game. 19 straight for the Athletics! They've tied the all-time American League record! There's a lot of cheering. I left it in here for now. Ah, the of the mind setting the setting the stage. The 1906 White Sox, the 1947 New York Yankees have company, and if that isn't another MVP statement by Miguel Tejada, I don't know what is. He is amazing. The A's are amazing. 19 in a row. 19 in a row. I mean, you think about that. Like, at that point, you're like, wow. And then the next game, you're cruising. You're absolutely cruising. You got Tim Hudson. Recently, we had all the guys with the season ticket holders. It was a great event. And Art Howe admitted, yeah, my fault. I thought this game was in the bag. And, of course, it would lead to one of the greatest home runs of all time. Scott Hatterberg is with us here on A's Cast Live once again. We're just playing that cut, and, you know, I'm glad Miguel Tejada came back. It's his first time coming back as an Oakland A, not as a someone of, like, the Baltimore Orioles or the Royals. He came back finally just to be Miguel Tejada, the Oakland A, and what he really means to the fan base and the franchise. And I got a sense, and I know you got to talk with your teammate what it meant for him to come back. And we could celebrate him as truly one of the great A's. I don't know if you got to hear the entire cup, but that was him with the game winner, 19. He was huge for you guys down that stretch of the win streak. Uh, he carried us He carried us there for, I mean, it seemed like the whole last week, it was just, it was the Miggy and then the rest of us. So, uh, yeah, he put us on his shoulders. It was great to see him back. The guy's such a humble guy. Um, you know, he doesn't come across as that, you know, all-star MVP guy. He's just a great teammate. Uh, he was thrilled to be back. We were thrilled to see him. Yeah. Uh, gosh, and he looked freaking physically cut. I mean, the, he still looked like he could play. He was going to throw out the first pitch, and they said, hey, you're going to catch it. And I went, catch it? This guy might throw a bullet at me. Anyway, he looked great. It was great catching up with him. It was a great weekend. Yeah, it was kind of like, hey, Miggy, uh, you think? I mean, shortstop, maybe no. Can you play second base? Could we DH you? I mean, can you still? I mean, he looked phenomenal. He really did. He really did. And I guarantee if you put him in the box, he put together pretty good AV. You know, I, I, I think about that weekend and just seeing you guys, because it's so different. We've done so much with the 70s teams that mm -hmm. won 72, 73, 74, and we've lost so many of them. And, and these guys... You know, it was such a long time ago for you guys. 20 years isn't that long, but it is time that you've been away and a chance to truly appreciate what you guys accomplished. Of course, it was an unbelievable year winning the American League West. But now that you've experienced that, what was it like hanging out with these guys? Because you mean so much to each other. Well, you uh, you um, you get back together and, you know, you haven't seen guys in a long time, but really good teams and really good, you know, locker rooms, you seem to kind of just fall right back into the same jokes, the same, the same rhythms. And it's exactly what happens. We've gotten together a couple times, I think it, at the 10 year and whatnot, but man, you just go straight back in. You're just transported right back into the locker room. It's a really tight knit group. I think you guys had mentioned earlier talking about the, we were, we were talking to the season ticket holders. Yeah. It just felt seamless. I, I knew everybody. I knew when DJ got the mic, he wasn't going to let go for a while. And I knew the stories. And there's great rhythm, people jumping on. Um, there was just great chemistry. And I know it's so cliche to say that's what it takes. But honestly, I was in a lot of locker rooms. I played 14 years. 
and there was none that came close to the ones that I had in Oakland and especially that team. So uh, there's something to it. I know it was a big part of, you know, how we were able to accomplish what we were able to accomplish. I think this weekend was really big for Art Howe. There was a lot of emotion and obviously the movie that everybody loves. And of course, you're, you're so prominent in the movie. But Art, the way he was portrayed, it, it definitely hurts him. And I did an interview with him after we did the event. I did an interview with him where he broke down and had tears when I was asking him about what does this mean to come back and get the love from the A's fans because A's fans truly love him. He got tears and choked up. Just talk about what this weekend meant for Art Howe and truly getting his due that he deserves. No, I love that question. It's the one thing. Listen, Hollywood's going to make a movie. They're going to put. They're going to put some. They're going to have a. You got to have a Darth Vader in the movie, right? I mean, you got to. So this is the hot sauce they put on it, and, and he he was the guy, and he was just not that guy, and he is. If you know Art at all, he is. He was really for us the ballast to that team. I mean, he was so calm. Uh, I know him and Billy had a little bit of a turbulent thing, but we. I didn't know it until really the stories came out. He hit it. He protected us. Uh, the guy is just as even keel, as classy, as pro as they get. And, you know, he's a big reason we were able to, you know, maintain a streak like that. I mean, I, I can't say enough good things about the guy. And that's just the baseball side. Outside of the uniform, the guy is just the most pure, great guy. Uh, I can't say enough good things about him. And he really kind of got hosed as far as his depiction and he would never come out and say anything to just ruffle feathers, you know, and ended up being a great movie for the A's, but he would never take it selfishly. So I love that he got out and I think people realize, you know, this is a great guy. It's a, it was a poor depiction for sure. Yeah. Great story. Clay Wood told me that after 2001 that, you know, everybody votes that everybody gets whatever for the playoff money in their shares and that they left out the the grounds crew. And Art Howe took a check and wrote the money out that should have been the grounds crew, uh, their share, out of his own pocket and gave it to Clay Wood and told Clay, disperse this, and I'm sorry, it will never happen again. The guy took money out of his pocket to take care of the grounds crew when the players should have done that, and he and he made sure it never happened again. That tells you the type of man and the integrity that Art Howe has. I mean, that's perfect. I, I didn't even know that. I mean, that story is perfect. That defines the guy. Uh, you know, he, he he's the manager, but, you know, he never put himself above anybody. He was he was a teammate. Um, anyway, we, we're, we're lucky to have a guy like that in, in just the A's history. And, and I'm lucky to have known him. So uh, I, I love hearing that story. That's a great story. All right. In the movie, you got Billy Bean, you got Wash in your living room trying to convince you on something. What really happened, and did you ever buy that yes from a catcher to first base? Well, you, they never showed up in my living room. Uh, that's one thing. I, I felt like he was in my living room. He called me, I remember, on Christmas Eve, and, uh, you know, he's a, big, he's a big personality, so I felt like he was there. Uh, I think Wash was home definitely, uh, not knowing what he was in store for, uh, trying to teach me how to play first base. But I thought, man, I have caught my whole life. I haven't picked up a ground ball ever. Um, and now this crazy guy wants to give me every day at bats and replace the MVP of the American League, Jason Giambi. I thought he was crazy, but I thought before he uh, sobers up, maybe just say yes, and I did. Um, and, you know, and after that, I just had a lot of sleepless nights going, how am I going to pick up ground balls? I actually had my wife hitting me <laughs> balls on a tennis court not too far from the house, which had pine cones all over it. I couldn't even feel those. Uh, and then I ended up spending a lot of time with Wash. But, wow, I did not think uh, what it was going to happen happened. Well, and then the story you told to the season ticket holders, which I was like, Wow is the bat, right? Because you hit this home run. It's a historic achievement. And you know anything that has anything with history, they're putting a sticker on it and they're sending it to Cooperstown. Well, you've got a bat sponsor and you're hitting a historic home run with a bat that's not sponsored. 
That's unbelievable. That's a whole other story a lot of people don't know. It, it, listen, it was a desperate situation. Some garage company had come by about a week prior. It was the most beautiful bat I've seen. I used it in BP. The ball jumped off of it. I thought this is a no-win situation. I've taken every single at bat of my life uh, had been with a Louisville slugger. And this one time I take this one, this bat to the plate and hit the biggest home run of my life. Oh, uh, man, when that when we celebrated in the locker room and that guy tapped me on the shoulder and he said, hey, Scott, I have a nice job. I'm so-and-so from uh, Cooperstown, the Hall of Fame, and I'd like that bat. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I handed that man a Louisville slugger. And uh, I told that story to Michael Lewis, and it ended up in the book. And um, – <laughs> Uh, Cooperstown didn't like that, and they sent that they sent that bat back to me with a sternly worded letter. Oh, that is that. that it, it's funny. It really is funny. But uh, thank God you did change that bat. Now, I mean, you've been asked about it so many times. You've seen it. We play the we play the highlight all the time. TV plays the cut. I mean, it's such a special moment in baseball history. Just not in A's history. Baseball history. It's an iconic moment. I mean, when you look back, do you ever get a chance just to just go, wow, I did that? Well, it's surreal, it's surreal to be kind of the, you know, the, the end of it or, you know, the climactic part of it. Um, having, you know, and it's, I can't, you know, I look at it and just, I mean, the, 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 the at-bat was a blur and for it to go out, I, I, you know, I don't know. It was just such a great moment, but it was such a great month. I mean, it was, this is like, it was like three weeks of us, of, of us doing this and it was it just built and built and built and some of those last few games there were so many people in, in the coliseum and you know miggy came through i think you guys were playing a few of them yeah uh, you know there was some dramatic stuff leading up to it uh you know we didn't really even know what the streak was until late nobody you know really heard of a you know winning streak so uh it was a great moment i look at it you know with a ton of pride but it was such a group pride thing too that uh, I get a little more credit, I think, than I deserve uh, just because the way it ended. But, man, it was a great team effort for, geez, almost a month. Well, and think about it. This game's a blowout, right? I was actually I, – I was doing morning radio uh, on the sports radio station, so I had to get up early. It was a blowout. I went to bed. I didn't even get to see it live. It wasn't until I woke up at like 3.30 in the morning and knew what happened. I mean, this this game was a laugher, so I'm thinking about for you – you're never probably first X amount of innings, first couple hours of the game, even preparing yourself mentally for this. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, the Royals have come back and now you got to be the hero. It was, it was one of those swings of emotion that it's hard to describe. I mean, we, we did it. We had all, I mean, if you look at that Coliseum, I remember there was, there was fans and all of those center field bleachers. I mean, they were everywhere. The place was rocking. The number was up. We had Huddy on the mound. We had an 11-0 lead. And the lowly Royals weren't going to take it from us. And I'm drinking crappy coffee. We had, I think, the September call-ups were up there. You know, and I'm, you know, shooting the breeze with all these new guys. And we were going to coast to this and, you know, dump some champagne on somebody. And, gosh, smash cut to me up in our crappy, dingy cage with Greg Myers watching this stupid little dusty TV we have up there just watching it unfold and everything get quiet and going, Oh my gosh, we're going to lose this. And I'm going to have to go pinch it. And against, you know, it's just a no win closer in Grimsley. So it, the emotion swing was just, it was something I've never experienced <laughs> for sure. And then you talked about, I mean, at that point, Grimsley's nasty. Oh my gosh, he's nasty. And I'd faced this guy a lot before and he's, you know, he's yoked up, steroids, not sure, but he sure looked like it. I mean, 98 mile an hour bowling ball sinkers. How am I supposed to hit a ball in the air off this guy? I mean, I, I just remember thinking to myself, listen, let's just have a, you got to have some kind of plan going out there other than taking, you know, Thunderbolt the bat or whatever that freaking bat was that I had. Roy Hobbs. Yeah, right. I had to do something other than, than that stupid thing, but I just wanted to get a ball up in the zone, and the first pitch was a big power sinker, ball one, and I thought, oh, yeah, it moves even more uh, than I remember. And I just thought, okay, see it up, if it's up, try to get a, maybe a double, get a guy in scoring position. And, you know, when you 
I got a pitch up and I was on time. And this is that pure feeling. I don't know if you felt it in baseball or golf when it's just like you don't feel anything. Ball jumps. The place goes crazy. It was an out-of-body experience. And I ran around the bases with zero poise. Um, it was uh, an, an amazing celebration. And it's just kind of a blur of a moment. But my gosh, yeah. I'm getting chills thinking about it. Yeah, and, and I think about your career and where we are today, especially with the A's, now that you're working in the front office, to where, you know, we've got 8,000 catchers that we've drafted and traded for, and you only won plays, and I don't like to see young guys DH in a ton because that's not good for them. I don't think mentally that's good for them. And we had Langoliers on this program. I said, hey, where else can you play? We've had his college coach on for Baylor. He's played some outfield. Langoliers thinks he could play some first and some third. You know, if, if Susak's going to hit, you know, the first round pick and he's coming up quick, got to find a spot for him. If Murph's going to be behind the dish. I mean, you kind of showed, as you said, I played catcher my whole life. Well, guess what? We need your bat. You've got to find somewhere else to play. And wouldn't you say versatility is so huge for these young guys, whether you've played catcher your whole life or you've played short or right field, it's important for these guys to learn to play other positions. I, I think it's a great point. And I think, I, I think uh, more than, than, than doing it is being open-minded to doing it. I mean, this is the situation, you know, you get in the draft room and you, you don't really uh, draft for need so much as you draft for the best talent that is at your pick. And, and it just so happens. I mean, we've had, we've had, we haven't had a good catcher for a long time. And then we get Murph, who may be the best in the game. And uh, now we got Langoliers, like you said, Soderstrom and Susak. I mean, it is a log jam, but it's a great log jam. Um, the versatility part's huge. I, I think that, you know, if you can catch, there's certain positions you can go figure out. Uh, Shea is such a blue collar, awesome kid. I loved him at Baylor. So thrilled to have him. Uh, the one thing about the A's is, you know, certain guys like Murph, they get real expensive, and we have a hard time keeping some of those guys. So there's some poker chip kind of uh, sensibilities with all of this. So that's part of it. But, uh, man, I, I'm lucky, but I'm with you. I don't like seeing a really good player like that just DHing. Uh, I'd love to see him wearing the leather somewhere. You know, I, I let's end on this, and we always appreciate your time. I mean, obviously, you're etched in A's history forever. So whatever you want to do, I mean, you were great on television. You've now worked with Billy for years. You know, when you think about looking forward long term for you, what do you want out of your baseball life? Wow. Good question. Sound like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I played a long time and, and you know, while playing, you know, they you're gone a lot. And that's, a, I mean, 10 months of the year, you're on the road. I've been really fortunate uh, to be a part of this organization, which there was no question as to where I wanted to be. And Billy was so, uh, you know, op open about me doing a lot of things. And I have done a lot of things. I've done the player development, the coaching side, and, and the scouting side has been really interesting. And I love it. Uh, I, have a, he, I have one more kid um, who's actually playing soccer at University of Arizona. She's a freshman. So I kind of got to push off a little bit of the really dipping – uh, jumping in the water uh, completely as far as uh, immersing myself in the whole front office thing. I want to be away a little bit and support some of that, see some of those soccer games, but I don't know. I like a lot of things. I don't know exact, exactly what direction I would love to go, but I just know one thing I want to be in the green and gold. Anything, anything doing that with them is great. Perfect for me. Well, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Hey, may, may, maybe, maybe we get an all fly fishing team and you now can we're Okay, you're on the Christmas list. I like that. <laughs> we'll go to Dave Cavill and say, hey, we're going to start competing in fly fishing. We got, hey, we we can put a team together. I know Billy can do it. I know you got me. Maybe we okay. put a team together. Oh, we got a team. You, okay, now you got my the wheels are running. I got it. I'm on it. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for your time. We always true appreciate. We always do appreciate when you come on Ace Cast Live and to to celebrate this moment. It, it meant so much. It, it meant so much to you guys. It meant so much to the fans. That team is just such a special team for, for Oakland A's fans. It's just, I, we all felt it, and, I, and I'm glad that you guys all got together. It was really cool stuff. Huge proud moment for us. Uh, we're, we love Oakland. You could tell by the turnout. I mean, gosh, how many guys showed up for that thing? Yeah, um, the, yeah no. Well, I, I know it meant a lot to them, but it meant 
double to us. So we're proud to be uh, part of the Oakland Nation, and I appreciate you guys having me on.